Now let's see how the Rob is fixing our exception handling problems. And remember, there are two of those problems. One of the problems occurs because this divide can be delayed and realize that R2 is zero much, much later, while the add, for example, can be quick and be done. So if you remember with Tomasulo's algorithm, the add would deposit the result to the destination register of the add long before the divide had a chance to determine that R2 is zero and that really we should have jumped to the exception handler here and never executed the add. So how does the ROB help? Well, what we do is we treat the exception just like any other result. So basically, when we determine that R2 is zero, instead of producing a result for R0, we mark the R0 in the ROB as, I mean, the result in the ROB is now going to be exception instead of a value. When the divide reaches the commit point, at that point, the ad still hasn't committed and everything before divide did. So at that point, we can just do the kind of wait for drain, you know, kind of flush everything, including the divide at this point, and then jump to the ex exception handler. And now we have a stable state for the handler, which is here. Basically, everything before the divide finished, the divide and everything after it didn't finish, which is exactly the state that the divide by zero exception handler should be seeing. Similarly, for a load that would here have a page fault, we would have the same situation of when the page fault reaches the commit. We have committed everything before the page fault, and we haven't committed the page fault itself or anything after it, so there is a very nice resume point for the page fault exception handler. When we go back there and load the page from the disk, we can jump back to the load or the store and then start executing from here, and because nothing here has already executed, everything is fine. The second problem with exceptions that we had were those phantom exceptions. Basically, if we predicted that the branch here is not taken, we would execute this divide and maybe get the exception, like divide by zero. And at the time when we get that exception, maybe the branch is still not resolved. So when we finally resolve the branch, it is too late because the divide by zero has already been triggered. So how does an ROB handle this? Well, the result of this instruction is now going to be marked as exception in its ROB. As the commit reaches the branch, at that point or before it, depending on what kind of branch misprediction strategy we have, we will figure out that the branch has been mispredicted and that we really wanted to jump to this label here. At that point, the divide and anything over here is not committed. Basically, we haven't committed anything after the branch. So we can just cancel these instructions. They never reach commit, and thus the exception here is never triggered. So the idea with exception handling is simply Treat the exception just as any other result and delay the actual handling of exceptions until the instruction that is triggering the exception commits. At that point, we know exactly what the resume point is for the exception handler and we know that we won't have any phantom exceptions because we would never reach the commit of this divide unless this divide was on the correct path for all the branches. Basically, if there was a misprediction, we would have canceled this divide long before it reaches the commit point.